It was another decisive day in Nigeria's social political history as voters went out across the country to participate in the presidential and national assembly elections. ProShare Web TV, Nigeria's leading online business and economic TV platform, had a field day as it engaged notable business leaders and billionaires Alaja Aliko Dangote, President of Dangote Industries, and Mr. Femi Otadola, Chairman of Forte Oil, on their experience performing their civic duty at the Olosa Tiamiu Savage O10 polling unit and the Adeyemi Lawson Ilu Drive polling unit 026, respectively. I think the process, you know, has actually gone very well, you know, despite uh, people thinking that it might not really go very well. You can see that it is very peaceful. Uh, you know, I haven't really seen any area where people are fighting or whatever. So I'm sure we'll get over it. You know, the anxiety is there. People are very anxious of uh, just getting, uh, you know, getting it done, you know, and uh, knowing who is going to be our next president and uh, our members of the National Assembly. You know, we got in at 8 a.m. Okay. and the INEC guys are not alright till about 8 30 which is okay. The democracy is evolving. It takes time to get things right. And there's been no darling. I'm proud to be a Nigerian. At one of the Lekki Phase 1 polling units, Mr. Valentine Ozibo, CEO of Transcorp Hilton, said the process despite initial delays was seamless. The flow seems to be seamless so far. Uh, there was a lot of delay starting, but um, some of us, we've been here now for upward of three hours and we it hasn't been got into a number, but we're grateful because uh, people who are organizing this have made it a lot easy for, so that people don't queue under the sun because you go pick up your number and then you simply wait for your turn. So that actually is uh, very helpful. It was the carnival experience at Victoria Garden City Polling Unit 033 and Pastor Tony Rappu, Senior Pastor, this present house church. A resident in the area spoke on the improvements in the political awareness and the value of a democratic process in the country. It's, it's getting better. There was a time church was insular and removed from the issues of the polity. But today, people have a better understanding of the role of church. A church cannot remove itself from the affairs of society. But then at the same time, church cannot be visibly partisan. So the role of church is to pray, to provide the morality behind the scenes. But beyond the prayer, we also have to act. But in acting, in voting, in casting our votes, what we're doing is standing behind a value system. So the church rises up and says, this is what we believe in. We believe in righteousness, good governance, morality, integrity, and look out for people who have these values. Ali Baba Akbobome, ace Nigerian comedian, who also performed his civic duty at the Adeyemi Lawson Ilu Drive 026 polling unit in Ikoyi, acknowledged that some progress has been made in the electoral process. Well, the electoral process in Nigeria is uh, growing with digitization uh, and uh, a lot more errors are being eliminated. Uh, remember when it was the op option A4, you can stand on the queue, your landlord sees you on the other side and you are finished. So as soon as you get home, you get a quick notice. So that's not happening again. And uh, you still had a bit of issues with the last card that was used. Uh, the la last uh, PVC machine that was used, a uh, data card reader. But this one is an upgrade to what they used before. So I think the process will continue to improve. Uh, now the, the machine itself even says accredited, uh, you are, yeah, you're accredited, you are, uh, yes, uh, accreditation concluded. So you hear the voice uh, and other people who are around can also hear the voice. It's getting better. It's not that we've not gotten there yet. If, if our electoral process is like a software, I would say we're about like 50%, 60% loaded. And uh, so it's still booting. But um, it, it's quite peaceful. A lot of people are around. The only thing is that quite a lot of people who are here uh, couldn't travel. And so they had their card but couldn't transfer their card to vote here. Mm. So I think the process should be done in a way that once you have a card and you, it's only one vote that you have, you can cast it anywhere. Once you do that, then 
you can cast your vote here. For instance, if you decide to vote here, you can cast a vote for House of Reps member in Port Harcourt and not vote again for any other House of Reps member. Yeah. You understand? So, seamless. seamless. So if I'm voting for the governorship candidate in the election and I'm in Lagos, I can vote for a governorship candidate in Delta State and cancel my vote for Lagos. You understand? Just, just yeah, exactly. But I think we'll get to that point. Uh, the other thing is that the sun is really hot and we should begin to get to a point where people can go into a cool, cool place, yeah. either a warehouse or something like that, mm -hmm. and vote as it's done overseas. Mm -hmm. Because if it does rain now, a lot of people would not have come out. If it did rain, a lot of people would not have come out. Mr. Valentine Ozibo and Mr. Libaba Akpobome both highlighted the essence of credible elections to the entertainment and tourism industries. As a comedian and an entertainer, we work in an environment. And if the environment is not conducive, then you don't have that thing they call uh, uh, amiable environment for you to, to make money. So you can't work in a war zone. You can't work in a place where the economy is low, people are poor. If the priorities are listed, entertainment will be the least that people want to, to consider. So as an entertainer, it is important that our electoral process is uh, perfect, uh, if not perfect, fair. Uh, we also believe that like, nobody should be disenfranchised. That's what we, we, we think about. And so as long as people are not disenfranchised, uh, it's, a, it's, it's okay. Tourism is the uh, mainstay of a lot of countries in the world. It's not yet the same for Nigeria. And the starting point is always in the leadership. Leadership, applying the right policies to drive the private sector to do the investments and you know, work for their returns on investment. So what we have seen so far, where you model up uh, Minister of Tourism uh, among other ministries, uh, is not the right way to go. So my hope is that uh, this election, we can use that to make a statement so if uh, President Buhari would come back to see uh, that this is an area he needs to improve upon, and uh, if he loses and um, another person emerges the president, to also see that they prioritize tourism. So either way, I'd like to encourage our Nigerian leaders, uh, the ball is in, in their courts, to make sure that they lead us well. Tourism should be our alternative to oil. And even a country like Ghana is doing a lot better than us, no matter irrespective of the size. So there's a lot we can do in this regard. And it starts from the policy direction, the uh, structure and governance process, the um, incentives you give to the private sector, the encouragement you give to them, and overall competitiveness of the environment. And when all of these are in place, and we also do up our tourism products, you see and do the marketing. The government needs to spend money marketing destinations. I like to see the minister of uh, FCT, you know, being the chief marketing officer of Abuja. I like to see the governor of Lagos State being the chief marketing officer of Lagos, because it's when you market the destination that the products within the destination can flourish, and uh, that. You know, investment. That's why when you go to uh, CNN and all of these media houses, you see like uh, Incredible India being advertised because they understand the importance of marketing destination. So there's a lot that can be done. Elijah Liko Dangote and Mr. Femi Otorola, as businessmen and entrepreneurs, also emphasize the importance of a stable climate to attract investment in the economy. Well, normally, you know, an average businessman, uh, you know, wants to make sure that, you know, the business, uh, you know, stuff is given a lot of priority. You know, um, the issue is that government doesn't really create jobs. They can promise whatever that uh, they feel like promising, but uh, the only creator of jobs are the entrepreneurs and the private sector. So I think whatever it is you know i think uh, you know we need to look at uh, you know the private sector so private sector some of us that we believe just in nigeria we continue to invest doesn't really matter whether there's election or no election uh, majority of foreigners they will not touch anything unless they see a clear sign of who is there and uh, who is not there you know but for us as nigerians you know this is where we are is our country 
no matter what, even if there are issues, we will look forward to solving those uh, issues. We have nowhere to go to. As an entrepreneur, things takes time to it takes time to get things right. It's like Rome was not built in a day. So we have absolute confidence in the country called Nigeria, and we're going to all stay and build it. With the conclusion of the presidential and national assembly elections, except for some areas that voting has been extended or cancelled because of violence and other issues, the outcome of the polls, if credible, will definitely advance Nigeria's democracy.